problem is for Borussia Dortmund, even if they develop, is that they have to see that Bayern is failing. And, and I just want to add to what Archie is saying. I mean, the biggest opposition for Bayern Munich is Bayern Munich themselves. And they managed to, to do that on the pitch with Kimmich, Goretzka, Musiala, Davies, great young players. But now in the management, they paired Oli, Oli Khan, Salah Hamisic, and not only Rummenigge, also Uli Hoeneß. He is the Don Corleone. This is like Marlon Brando dying in episode <laughs> one of Godfather. He's, he's gone. He's been there since he was 27. And he's no spoilers, this Jan. club. Yeah, you know, he's, he's, he's been there all the time. And they have sold, in this pandemic, they said, oh, we don't have money, we have nothing to spend, and look at the oil nation and so on. Well, start, we get money from Boateng, Martinez, and, uh, and, and Alaba for free. They left them for free. I mean, this is how bad Bayern Munich are run. So this could give Borussia Dortmund a chance, but they got to be there. They have to believe that they can beat this uh, by a Munich uh, team and this is nothing to do with Julian Nagelsmann because they've probably got the best coach of them all but he can't do it on his own he needs to have help for people in and around him and and we've seen now they've lost a four is it four or five games they've lost or three or four games they've lost in, in the preparation a lot of injuries players coming a bit dodgy back I, I'm not sure this is my wishful thinking but I hope for an exciting Bundesliga this year Oh, yeah, obviously we all do. Now, it's Daniel Marlin who has come in at Borussia Dortmund, Archie. I've actually seen today that Marco Rosa was saying that he's seen in training his extraordinary ability, but there are still a few things that they can add physically and they'll be working on that. But he said, we do have Donny on our radar for, for the weekend's game, for Saturday's game. Has there been excitement about this player coming in at Dortmund? There has been. I think it's going to be different from Jaden Sancho because of positionally, he's more of a second striker. So seeing Dortmund with two up front and potentially with Yusuf Mukoko playing there as well, it's it's an exciting prospect. The thing with Dortmund, though, it, I, I don't have too, too many worries about Daniel Marlin. It's more about what's happening at the other end. This is what yeah. the whole title race, I think, is going to come down to. You look at defensively, how are Leipzig going to be after losing Kanate and Upa Meccano and Dortmund? I look at that defense. Gregor Kobel had a very good season for Stuttgart. How much of an upgrade is he on Roman Burki and Marvin Hitz? That is the biggest question mark for me over Borussia Dortmund's title challenge. It seems like... Sometimes with their transfer policy, they would like to have their dessert for breakfast, as I believe some people say. And it's like, uh, do you want to invest that money at the back a little bit more? They have a guy who's going to start at centre-back in all probability this uh, this weekend. Antonius Papadopoulos was playing in the third division last season. was originally signed for the second team. Because of injuries, he's likely to start. Fairy tale story on the one hand. On the other hand, I'm looking at it and being like, can you be title challengers with with a player like that? Maybe he's going to step up to the plate. Who knows? But I have um, question marks. And what about and what about Marco Rossi? Is coming in. I, I love Marco Rossi. He looks like a Dortmund coach. He looks like a world scout uh, coach, and he's been good at Gladbach at, at times. And then Edin Terzic winning the, uh, the the cup. How many games will Marco Rossi? lose before you see photos and pictures of this so-called technical director. They never had a technical <laughs> director. They, they had to give him a job to sit there at the back there. So it's not all honeymoons as at, at Dortmund either. But I agree with Archie. I mean, there's all so many young talents you can have. and But it's still homers. There's still some other defenders who, who can't defend. And it's going to be interesting how long they can go for, for this. Because... Erling Holland will score between 20 and 30 goals. We know that. But how many will they concede? Will they still concede these silly goals on corners and so on? Because Bayern will have a bit trouble in August, September, October. But then the train starts rolling. And they will see how far they've come, Dortmund, so uh, they can be reachable for them. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.